And we're back. How are you guys? No one's gonna come back. I feel pretty good. I'm yeah. doing okay. I want to keep praying after that closing prayer, you know? Yeah. What's new? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> How was your prayer? Did you guys pray? I'm really curious. As, I prayed as much as I could with the kids yelling in the background. Yeah. He'll meet you where you are. You know what I mean? Mm. Just came from YouTube watching a Mother Angelica video? What was she talking about? She's amazing. Yeah, truly. Has anyone heard Jesus say, I'm sorry, it shocked me. Wow. I, I mean, I didn't hear him say that right now, but yes, I have heard him say that. And that's really beautiful. Love the prayer. It was good, but hard to sit in the disappointment. You know, I, it is. And I think that's why people don't want to totally. pray yeah. with hard stuff is that you really have to kind of go back to it. But let me tell you something. In my experience, pushing it down, diminishing it, dismissing it, compartmentalizing it, it doesn't work. It doesn't go away. It just like comes out all sideways in all these other unexpected ways, you know? it ends up hurting us and hurting other people. So I find that when we encounter the Lord in our disappointment, somehow he like takes the sting out. There's a sweetness to it. There's an intimacy to it now. Whereas before it was just sheer desolation or despair, right? Now it's like, that's now a place of connection and intimacy. And isn't that how relationships are strengthened is when you let someone vulnerably into your pain and they show up for you and support you, how healing that is in the midst of the loneliness of that discouragement. Tess asked, how do you know it's the Lord speaking and not my brain? Gosh, I could say so much about that. We do have to mature in discernment. There's like the very real aspect of formation, right? Are, are you reading good things? Are you in the word? Are you staying close to the sacraments? We want our souls to be uh, a place where God can speak freely, move freely, act freely, lead us, and we respond. Um, so that grows in relationship, that confidence in his voice grows. The more time we spend in relationship, the more our consciences are formed. Um, I would say for me primarily, does what I heard line up with scripture? Is it true? <laughs> you know, is it a true, good, beautiful thing that the Lord said? Um, and, and for me, like my personal litmus test is, does it sound like him? Because for a long time I would hear things from the Lord in prayer that were just like too kind. And I, I couldn't believe it because I would actually never talk to myself that way. Yeah. Um, I think in prayer with formation, good formation, the Lord will use and inspire your imagination too. So yeah, it is your brain cooperating with the Lord yeah. and he will use all of your faculties, your intellect, your memory, your senses, your imagination. The more we come to belong to the Lord, the more he um, can use anything, speak to us any way he likes. I'm going on and on, but you're, there's that's a lot a, of stuff That's here. a promise in scripture, John yeah. 10, 10. John. Mm -hmm. John 10. 10. I think 24. Here we go. My sheep hear my voice, 27. 10, 27. I I'll know that. I'll it on my body and so they I remember follow it. me. My sheep hear my voice, which means the shepherd, Jesus, right? He says, I'm the good shepherd. Jesus is speaking and we can hear him. 1027. There you go. He said it, not us. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Sorry that I had the wrong verse. Oh, good. I do it all the time. Hi, I'm from Brazil. You guys, you had a lot to say. I want to read it to Beth. Oh, Jesus yes, please. told me he's protecting me. Yes. Amen. So good. Love that. Hang on to that. Listen to this from Brit Z Bear. Hi, Brit. I realized every time I prayed for more friends, the Lord sends me Catholics. During the prayer, one of my new Catholic friends texted me. What? I started to cry because I realized how the Lord blessed me. Okay, first of all, I'm starting to cry. It's amazing. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Life is hard. My life is hard. This morning I heard Jesus say, just rest, and felt his hand on my forehead while I lay to fall back asleep. Yeah, he wants you to do that. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Can we talk for a moment about friendship? Because I actually before I saw it was 1025 and yeah. I had already been talking so much and yeah. the prayer was so beautiful. I wanted to end with, look, it says Jenna. 
my person right because of the Lord these are my notes this is how I write my notes <laughs> I wanted to say Jesus being your friend is not to the exclusion of other people. I kind of mentioned that at the beginning. Yeah. We do need other people, but the Lord will send friends and the friendship that will really satisfy, like the, the, the friendships with other human beings, the relationships with other people on earth that will satisfy you are friendships rooted in the Lord. Yeah. That's what makes them so satisfying and so beautiful because they're in sync with the most important friendship in your life. Like if you're married, don't you want your friends to love your spouse? Isn't it important totally. that they like like him and yeah. you wanna all be together and isn't it better, right? It's just what I think, it's just what I observe. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just what I hope. I, I want that, I want my friends to know Jesus and love him and get it right? Get what he's doing. Yeah. And the friendship is so much deeper, more profound, more satisfying because we have the most important thing in common, right? Yeah. I prayed and asked Jesus to hug me and sat there with that intimacy and vulnerability for a moment, then said, thank you. And I love you. And I felt heard him say, I love you more. Yeah. Wow. The Holy Spirit took me into a memory from my childhood to show me that wow. God is not an angry father. He is loving, kind, and wow. patient. How do we reconcile between fear of God and friendship with Jesus? Well, I'm sure the catechism would have a lot of good stuff to say about fear of God as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Fear of God is really probably better translated awe right. or reverence, Yeah. right? I don't think there are a ton of boundaries in our friendship with Jesus. I remember early in my friendship with Jesus when I would be angry about something and like really lose it. I would like get it all out. I would write in like big angry letters in my journal. I would cuss, not at the Lord, but like I would cuss about things, you know? Which if you've been around a while, you know that the Lord has really like purified both of our hearts and called us to not curse. But at the time, that was honest. That I was I was letting him totally in. I was showing him all of my stuff. Now, in relationship with him, he's purified me of that, but totally out of love, not like shamed me into not cussing. He met me where I was and called me on, like called me to be transformed. So I think the problem with starting with fear of the Lord, our experience of authority on earth is oftentimes that it's like tyranny, like authoritarian. It's like, so we're either cowering like a slave, right? Or we're begging like an orphan. Whereas if we know that we're loved in right relationship with the Father, there is a deep love and respect and security that we feel with the Father who takes care of everything. But I do think it, it develops over time. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, this was, um, we're reading Second Corinthians right now and- Just um, like uh, as friends. Yeah. Yeah. You're not missing anything. So verse or chapter seven, verse one was something that was really beautiful to me. Since we um, have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and of spirit, making holiness perfect in the fear of God. Yeah. So I want my holiness to be perfect out of what Beth said, awe and reverence and just like he is so worthy. Yeah. He is so worthy of me being stripped of all my worldly and earthly desires and instead being holy. He is worthy of cleansing my heart to be pure for him. Um, so that's, I totally agree. I think it's starting with this relationship and friendship yeah. with the Lord that then is like, oh my gosh, you are so good and you are so worthy and I want to be holy for you. Like I want to be totally yeah. purified and close and have nothing yeah in my way, nothing barricading my relationship with you. So I don't think that they're opposites. Yeah. I think that they definitely go hand in hand in this like just pure desire to love him like holy. W-H. Well, and I think holy. you you experience his love, his perfection, his, sorry, for oops, his like beauty and goodness and kindness. And you're so moved by that. Like I have felt in prayer like, why? Why would you choose me and love me? In, in light of who he is, you become very acquainted very quickly with your sins and your weakness and your shortcomings. Yeah. And then because of who he is and how he's totally loved you and accepted you, you want to be like him. That's like the natural movement in the spiritual life. 
You can always look in the Bible where his words live on and ask him to speak there. Amen. That was 2 Corinthians 7.1. 7. Yeah, I totally agree. I just prayed, Mike and I prayed with each other this morning before we got on our work days, and I just prayed for an increase of discipline for both of us, that we would like have a desire to be in the word, and that right when we get in it, the Lord speaks to us, particularly so to good. what we need. Yeah. So that we continue to like eat that up. It's spiritual nourishment, we need it. We need to know what he's saying about our lives, and it's said in the word. That that pertains to my everyday life. That yeah. verse right there from 2 Corinthians 7, 1 pertains to my life and convicts me to change my life, which is always what the Lord's doing for me right now. Yes. We have an established foundation of a friendship and I want my life to be changed by him. I just love what you said, that it's not one or the other. It's not friendship or fear of the Lord. Yeah. It's both and. Yeah. It's, it's love, awe, reverence, respect, gratitude, yeah. all in one relationship. Um, someone had asked earlier, and I'll, I'll try to find it really fast. Hi, Nell. We're reading um, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians with Nell, which is just such a gift. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling with the idea of confession. It seems contradictory that the Bible stresses we can't do anything to earn God's love, yet have to go to confession to be able to take the Eucharist. Yeah, it's kind of how we frame things, you know? When I think about going to confession and being cleansed of my sins, getting it out, being honest, asking for forgiveness from the Lord... It's because I want to be holy. I want to I want to totally receive him. I don't want anything to be in the way of that. It's not because I'm dirty or unholy or there's a tension here, right? It's not because I'm rejected until I go to confession. I'm actually perfectly loved right here and now. Yeah. The Father doesn't love me any more after confession than he does before. We can't we can't actually do anything to make God love us more or less. We can't. So it has nothing to do with how the Lord feels about us. It has everything to do with our ability to receive his love. So I go to confession because I want to be a resting place for him because I want to receive all the grace that he wants to give because I want the Eucharist to take its full effect in me because I want to be like him because he's perfect and I know that I'm not but I want to grow so I think it has a lot to do with how we frame it yeah it, it absolutely says we can't do anything to earn his love yes we already have it mm -hmm. and and Beth is I totally agree it's yeah. just a matter of us having pure hearts that can receive it continue to receive it I think of confession as a spring cleaning for the soul God loves us and calls us by name, even through our sin, but confession is our way of enabling ourselves to get the grace. Well, yeah, let's talk about, let's talk about that. When we are bogged down with sin, we can't hear him. There, there are cloudy. actual, yeah, it's foggy, we're grouchy. I, I'm not even talking about just our behavior. I'm talking about our ability to discern, to hear God's voice, to love people, to receive love, right? Sin is real. It takes real effects in our lives. It changes, it changes our soul, right? It mars our soul. So let's like get it out so that we can receive God's love and presence more fully. I know my, my prayer is not great because I need to go to confession. I'm, I don't feel like praying. I'm not hearing God in prayer. I'm agitated. I know it's because sin, which is real, and is death in the body like i want to get that out so that i can receive god's life in my body what about when you strive to sit and hear the lord and all you get is crickets gosh so many things <laughs> i could say about that saint ignatius talks about the uh in the rules for discernment the experience of desolation right not feeling close to the lord he gives three primary reasons that we wouldn't feel consolation in prayer that we're not feeling close to the lord the first is uh, that we've become lazy, tepid, um, or negligent of our spiritual exercises. But if you're praying, I would say you're not doing that. I would ask about like regularity. How often are you praying? Have you been to confession and like cleaned out the gutters? You know, are you, are you regularly showing up in prayer or is this every now and again and you're just not hearing God? I would say maybe you're maybe you're just not spending a lot of time with him, you know? And things are a bit foggy in here. They're a bit like stuffed up. I'm like cleaning out my ears, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he would say also sometimes the Lord allows, uh, allows desolation to try us, 
like he he's asking like will you keep coming to me if i'm not giving you such great pay of consolation and great graces will you still come if i'm not like extending my hand in blessing all the time will you instead seek my face and then finally he says uh, a reason you might experience desolation is that we would know that it is not ours to give or to keep consolation that it's only from from the lord right we can't make consolation happen in prayer we can't make ourselves feel goosebumps and tears like all of those inspirations those moments of feeling close and connected and intimate with the lord inspired that's all the lord all, literally all we're doing is showing up and keeping the keeping the highway clear <laughs> by going to confession so that we can hear him right so those would be reasons you might experience desolation or quietness in prayer but i will tell you that i have learned in recent years with a regular prayer life right with a regular reception of the sacrament of confession in particular staying close to jesus in the eucharist i have just found the lord to be the strong silent type you know there he doesn't rush in with platitudes he doesn't rush in with um with words sometimes he just gives us space the the psalmist writes about this david writes like you gave me room when i was in distress sometimes he just gives us space to come and to be and he's just quiet and present don't we all long for those relationships where like you don't have to be talking you can just be totally at peace in someone's presence sometimes i think that's the lord he's just with us hanging out we're not working on something we're not problem solving or um you know getting like major insights we're just being together we're just we're just being friends together does that help I don't know. That was like a whole lot. Yeah, that was beautiful. Stuff. I think it's also helpful to look at scripture. Mm. Um, maybe find an example of someone who did feel like the Lord didn't show up for them. The mm. first thing that came to mind was Mary when Lazarus died. Yeah. And she's like, Lord, you didn't come. Or was it Martha? I mean, they were both sad. They were both upset. But Mary was like, I don't want to. I don't want to see you right now. Anyway. You would have been here. My brother would not have died. Yeah, she was upset. Just like we get upset when we feel like the Lord's not showing up for mm -hmm. us at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. And he did. He came for her. And he is the resurrection and the life. And she recognized that. Mm -hmm. So maybe just sit with something in scripture like that, where you can put yourself in Mary and Martha's shoes and be like, Lord, you're not showing up for this. And continue to see what he wants to reveal to you for your particular situation. Okay, but I, situation. I love that example because Martha did go out to Jesus and say, if you had been here, Lord, don't open the thing. He'll smell. She yeah. did relate her heart. Sometimes yeah. I think we go to prayer and we're like, okay, say something, you mm -hmm. know, like tell me the answer. Yeah. But he's like, I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm waiting for you to open up your heart and allow me to look inside. Yeah. So when the Lord is quiet, I sometimes we're quiet together, but a lot of times I know it's because I need to get some stuff out yeah. and he's giving me the room to do that. Yeah, that's beautiful. I need to just talk to him. So even to say, Lord, I'm really frustrated that when I come to pray, I'm not hearing your voice. Don't worry about discerning what the silence is. Just tell Jesus, I'm uncomfortable with the silence. Are you here? Are you listening? You, you know, just talk to him like a friend, like he's right there because he is. Uh, how to not wish you were still in the days of your faith walk when you were more excited about Jesus. Ooh, Jenna, you've, you've talked about this. zeal. Yeah. I think that's natural. Yeah. To feel like, oh, I was much more zealous then and I wish I could get it back. I don't know. I just, I find relationship with Jesus so satisfying in every stage and season so you know i just i referenced um hearing quiet in prayer and i remember being on a five day a couple of years ago and um i was so angry at jesus i didn't even know it was there really i didn't know like like it was like rage and um and he was sitting there with me actually he was like he had been scourged he like had the crown of thorns and I was like screaming at him. I was like one of the soldiers, you know? 
And um, why am I telling you this? Jesus? I feel Jesus, like you brought me on. out here. Come on. Yeah. What was the question? You Zeal. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. When you were going excited back, going about back. Jesus. Yeah. So in that moment, I'm like screaming at him and I'm like, say something. Like, yeah. defend yourself. Why are you doing this to me? Yeah. And then I was like, no, you know what? Don't say anything. I'm so mad. I don't believe you. I don't trust you. Anyway, I got it all out. Yeah. The Lord never said anything. Yeah. And the experience of him not leaving, not putting me in my place, not like giving me just platitudes, like it's gonna be okay, don't worry about it, you're fine. Oh, I promise I'm gonna take care of it in the future. Nothing, just him being there steadfast and quiet was so profoundly healing that even though that was an extremely uncomfortable situation in prayer and a hard season in prayer, I look back and I think, thank God I had that season because I now understand his silence. I now understand his steadfast presence. So yeah, I think seasons of zeal are like fun, <laughs> but like any relationship, when, when, when you just build up experience and memories with a person, the whole thing is so rich, you know? You yeah. learn so much in different seasons. So I don't, I don't often look back on my like earlier days in faith, I kind of look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, you <laughs> had so much to learn. <laughs> you know, like that was very sweet, but the Lord is like so real and intimate and here and now. He's alive right now. He wants to encounter you right now. He doesn't want you to... Consolations, memories of consolation will certainly like reinvigorate us, but yeah. he wants to be with you right now. He wants to give you zeal right now. I mean, I can liken it to like dating, right? Yeah. Like you're just so excited. Yeah. It's like so exciting to go on a date with like someone you like, you know. Is it's it? so Gosh, fun. I wonder what that's like. It's so fun. Okay, great. And then, you know, you get married and it's super fun and you're like super zealous about yeah. this relationship and you're like so in love. And then later on, kind of wanes, but yeah. kind of wanes if you're not putting in the work. Mmm. That's what I've recognized for myself in yeah. my marriage and my relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Which is, it's not because the Lord's leaving me out to dry. Yeah. It's because I'm focusing on things that are not him. Mm -hmm. Same with Mike and me. Yeah. You know, if I'm work, 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 or only focusing on the kids or whatever, wanting to like be out with friends instead of putting in the work in our relationship. Yeah. It's a little rocky, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not because the seed's bad. Amen. Sometimes we're not, we're just not primed for the seed. Gosh, that's so true. The soil needs some work. We need to till that soil. Yeah. Problem isn't Jesus. The problem is the soil of our hearts. Is this how you till? That's one of the tools, I think. I don't know anything about gardening, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is going to show up. Jesus is going to come through. Jesus was with me, right? Yeah. What? This, I like this next question. What is it? Okay, well, back to that also. Yeah. Tell me. When we're having a hard time in marriage or when one of us is struggling in marriage, we feel so much closer when we're actually communicating about that struggle. It's the same with the Lord. So true. If one of us, us, because <laughs> he's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. When we're struggling, we can draw close to him and become so much closer. Susie, you got it. Yeah. Like you're doing that. It's beautiful. Yeah. I need to do that. It's Sorry. just good rules for relationship. Last night, Jenna and I had a conversation and I shared some things that are like very real that I'm thinking about all the time and processing on my own and I'm like trying to get over it. But saying it to Jenna and being received, I was like, oh, I feel so much better and more at peace and that thing isn't so scary anymore, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's what happens when we relate our heart and we just talk to Jesus as a friend in pain, in desolation the intimacy that comes with that in some ways is better than the zeal. I don't know. That's just my experience. Yeah. Ginger said, my prayer this week is that your future husband is preparing his heart for oh you. Oh my gosh. I'm single and have also been praying for my husband since I was very young. It's very kind, Ginger. I'm going to start crying. I thank you so much for praying for me. Thank you for praying for him. I suspect that he needs a lot of prayers right now just because of a crazy dream I had, but Keep praying, keep your hope up. The Lord loves you, he has a good plan. He hasn't forgotten about you. I'm feeling like so 
like I'm supposed to be talking about being single right now. Not right right now, but like yeah. I was just telling you that last night. Anyway, I'm gonna keep praying about that and I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray that God gives you the desires of your heart. It's so hard to pray for my future husband. I feel like he doesn't exist. Yeah, it's so hard to speak to that, right? Because I don't know like all of your prayer, right? Um, I don't know what the Lord is calling you to, but if you are called to marriage, your husband does exist. Yeah. He does. Yeah. And he definitely needs prayer. Not because he's like St. Augustine out here doing whatever he wants. I don't know. Maybe he is, but no matter, he just, he needs prayer, right? Yeah. So I would just keep praying until the Lord shows you otherwise. Um, how should you pray for your future husband? Do you have a way you like to do it, Beth? I've done so many things over the and years. And share your comments if you guys have ways to. Yeah. So um, in college, I bought a rosary. It's like a super cool store. It was very expensive. The Lord like sent me a check for that amount of money. It was like so crazy. Mm -hmm. And I prayed that rosary for years. And then literally that rosary started to fall apart. Like at one point, Jesus fell off of the cross of this like beautiful, very expensive rosary. And I was like, okay. I don't, I don't really know what that means. Yeah. It was kind of discouraging, but I was like, maybe not right now. Um, I've offered different things for him. I don't know. Just ask the Lord. How should I pray about this? Currently, I pray a St. Michael prayer every day for his protection. Emily Wilson has a good post about a prayer for her future husband. Oh, it's so good. It's so beautiful. Go check out on YouTube. She's the best. What are your thoughts on soulmates? Frankie asked. Jenna? I don't believe in soulmates. I believe in making choices in life. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. So Mike is not my soulmate. We just chose to be with each other for the rest of our lives. You chose him to be your soulmate. Your chose soul's mate. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've written letters to my future husband as well. That's also, nice. I look back on those and I'm like, oh my gosh, he will never read these letters. I can't. I want to read them. Wow. Gosh. No, I gave that up a while ago for good reason. You burned I them? mean, no, it's there in a. <laughs> anyway. Gosh, little Beth, young Beth. What a choose sweet, your what choice, a Jenny said. Choose your choice, Jenny. Choose your choice. <laughs> You're so right. That's it. Your soul's mate now likes that. Thank you, Nell. I recently learned about a baby rescued from sex trafficking. It yeah. breaks my heart so much it keeps me up at night. How do I keep from being angry that Jesus or Mary didn't intervene to save them? Yeah, I would, I would tell them. I'm really angry. I can't sleep. I'm so angry. I'm so upset. I'm sad. I can't stop thinking about that baby. I would just, I would just talk to him. You don't have to... Prayer is not about figuring out how to manage your feelings. It's about expressing your heart, relating your heart honestly to Jesus because he's real and he's a friend and he's right here. So I would, I would just tell them everything. Yeah. I would also pray for protection for like all sex trafficking. Wow. Victims as well. Like if that's that, if that is burdened yep. on your heart, yep. um, I feel a sense of responsibility and like want to pray for protection and saving of people being sex trafficked, children being sex, yeah. sex trafficked. Like I think each one of us, the Lord burdens each one of us to pray mm -hmm. for something specific. Yes. And so that might be yours and mine. I'm totally with you on that. So I'll be joining you in prayer for mm -hmm. that. That's beautiful just to pay attention to like what moves your heart. Like yeah. Lord, what are you asking me to do about this? Right. You know? Yeah. How can I um, intercede in a, in a meaningful way? Right. What do you yeah. want me to do? Yeah, that's good. That's really good. How did you know you wanted to marry Mike? Beth? Oh my How did gosh. You know? Tell I'm not married. I don't to think him. I know. <laughs> Tell him. I don't I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I don't have a I mean you story. were crazy about him. Yeah. I knew the moment I saw him play the drums to a worship song. Mm-hmm. And I saw a person who was free and alive. And I was very attracted to someone who was free and alive. So that's when I knew. I love that. I love that answer. Very attracted to freedom. What did I like about him? He was free. <laughs> he was so cute. He was like a total man's man. He's going to protect me. Yeah. He reminded me a lot of my dad. I have a really amazing dad. He called me out. He... I was waiting for you to get to that one. <laughs> He's not 
like a doormat. He's like a strong man. <laughs> He's very funny. He has a velvet rope. Gosh, all of those things. He came in, we were chatting last night. He came in within like 30 seconds. We were just dying laughing. He's just so funny. Yeah. We've been married for almost 12 years. He's a good time. Is purgatory biblical? Yes. It's in the Catholic Bible. Yeah, you can uh, Google it. Yeah. Where in the Bible is purgatory? Maccabees. Maccabees. I don't know which one though. I don't know which one. I just believe I think it. It's second. So I like never really struggled with it. I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense that I would want to go and get purified before I'm in the presence of perfect love and peace and right. power. Yeah, I got to get all of the remnants. I mean, I'm working that out on earth, right. but I know there are things that I'm like not even aware of yet, you know, in God's mercy. But yeah, maybe. Maybe what? Maybe I'll bypass purgatory, but I'm also like, yeah, I need that. I really need that. Yeah. It makes me like feel really inspired to like get my stuff done now. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I got yeah. a lot of cleaning out to do. Got to yeah. make room for Jesus. Yeah. The Lord's given her a little nudges. I'm doing a lot of these hand motions. I love it. Yeah, that's good. That's probably the better way. That's like probably the more Catholic. Thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to getting a hot shower. <laughs> it's not a hot shower. That was a bad example. What? Didn't Father Parks or Nell talk about, per like, we shouldn't? What did Father Parks say I about mean, purgatory? Nell and Anthony say, like, you, you don't want to go to purgatory. Like, right. work on it right now, which right. is true, which is yeah. very Catholic. But I've always thought, like, yeah, there's no possible way that I could make myself ready for that. There's just no way. Well, yeah, you can't. Right. Yeah. Amen. Just the Lord. Amen. I can't wait for the world to open up again safely so I can go to a restore retreat. So sad the one in Colorado didn't happen. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to Denver, sadly. We're not going to Until Denver. next year. God willing. Oh, my God, goodness. Whatever his plan is. Whatever God wants. But we're going to be coming to Ann Arbor and Peoria and Illinois. Nashville. That's Illinois. What? I said three places. Peoria, Ann Arbor. but I don't know if people know where that is. Oh, Peoria. You're right. Someone did ask if it meant Peoria, Arizona. Nope. Peoria, Illinois. Yeah. And Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> okay. That was a little... <laughs> and Ann Arbor, Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> We're doing a tour. Yeah. Taking this show on the road. We just want to pray with you. Yeah. We, wanna, we want you to be free. We want to break chains. We want to... Break Get every chain. Blow fear out of here. No, thank you. No, thank you. Well, we're not. The revival nights are not a retreat. They are uh, worship, adoration, confession, and a talk. So they're kind of like the evening sessions of the restore retreat, but different talks, different content. The Lord's given her a little nudges. I'm doing a lot of these hand motions. I love it. Is the Houston retreat still on? It is still on the website. Mm -hmm. We are discerning it. You guys yeah. know God knows, but we don't yet. I feel really hopeful about the revival nights and we'll know more. You know, we're living our life according to the word. Free as a bird. Which is, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path, right? It's not a spotlight, it's not a flashlight. I can't see half a mile down the road, but this next step of doing the Re Re Restore Revival Night in Nashville, I'm gonna take that step. And then I'm gonna take the next step, which is to go to Peoria, Illinois and hang out with my friend Bonnie. Then I'm gonna take the next step with my little lantern at my feet on the path, and I'm gonna go to Ann Arbor. Hang out with your friend Debbie. See my friend and Debbie. Love Revolution. See my friend Elise. Hopefully see my friend Lauren. I don't know if she's watching. Probably not because she's a doctor. But I'm hoping <laughs> I need to tell her I'm coming because I want her to come. Maybe I'll see my aunt. She's there. She's probably not wow, watching Wow, that's either. got a lot of people in Michigan. I want my aunt to come. I have no one in Michigan my friend besides Emily, Debbie. My friend Shannon. Come on down. Oh, Shannon and Emily. They're my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, this is just one little step at a time. One little lit up step at a time. Yeah. Then once... You know, I'm like, I'm having conversations. I'm praying out here, talking about Houston, talking about, talking about, talking about it. <laughs> and then we'll see what we do. See what the Lord does. Okay, on that note. Wow. 
Uh, didn't the little flower say she would be a great saint someday through God's mercy in the spirit of he can do anything? Yeah, absolutely. I need some little flower elevator action. That's the image she had was like, let me just climb up into the arms of Jesus and he'll lift me up to sanctity because I cannot climb this staircase. That's where I'm at. Or I'm over here in Teresa of Avila's camp. Like, am I even in the first mansion? I don't know yeah. how I'm supposed to get I'm to the center the mansion. Is that a thing? That moat. is the moat. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's all these poisonous creatures. This is what she writes about. They're like biting you. I'm like, I might be out there. Yeah. I don't know, but I think I'm in. That sounds kind of familiar, but definitely still back here in mansion one, you know? Yeah. I just, I need a lot of help. I need a lot of prayers. <laughs> All right, guys. You are not alone. Yes, the we Revival Night in Peoria is at the home parish. I don't know the answer to this, but I said yes, of Bishop Fulton Sheen. The cathedral. It's at yeah. the cathedral. It's at the cathedral. Where his body is. Yep. Right? Yeah, apparently there are other relics there. Wow. I didn't know about that. It's pretty exciting. Are we going to live stream adoration Woo! again? Oh, thinking about it because you asked. Kelsey is listening. Yeah, we don't know if we're in the this. first mansion. We don't know a lot. All we know is the lamp. Man, this is my little lamp on my next step. This one? Boop. The Lord is lighting up that little cave, Beth, that you're walking into. Oh my gosh, I had another nightmare last night. Oh no. And I woke up and I was like, Jesus, get in here with the flashlight. Yeah. Jenna had the, that image when she was praying for me. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Hi guys, Jenna Gizar here. I just want to say thank you so much for coming over to our YouTube channel, hitting that subscribe button, liking this video so we can continue to create content that brings you life and happiness and laughter and gives God all the glory. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye.